Alright, so today I'm going to be making a quick video to show you how to run a Minecraft server on the Ubuntu distro of the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, if you don't have the Ubuntu distro and you're using something like the Bane, this should still work. You just need to make sure you have Java installed, which I'm not going to go over in this video because conveniently it's already installed on Ubuntu distro. So the first thing you want to do is sudo apt-get update, and I'll make sure I post a link to all the commands on Pastebin or something like that, because YouTube won't let me post things with um, some of the Unicode characters you need. So you're going to want to make sure you do that sudo apt update. As you can see on my terminal screen there, I've already done it. Next thing you're going to want to do is make a directory for your Minecraft server. I'm actually just going to copy my own commands here because it'll be a lot quicker. Okay, so I just made that directory. Now I'm going to cd or change. Now that I'm into it, I'm going to go ahead and download the server jar here. And this is the Mojang's vanilla server jar. I tried using a spigot one and it literally was the exact same thing, like the performance was about the same. So we're going to go ahead and download this real quick. Now we're going to make a shish file, which is the um, Linux equivalent of a batch file. It just runs the commands that you type into it. So we're going to go ahead and nano into that real fast. We're going to paste this handy little Java code into the command. Control X, Y, and enter. Next, we're going to chmod that file. That way it gives it the permissions to run that we need it to run. So we're going to go chmod plus exit. And then to start the shish file, we're going to type in dot slash start dot shish. Now it's going to take it a few seconds and it's going to pop up and say something about you needing to accept a EULA thanks to Microsoft acquiring Mojang and putting all these legal things on it. So we're going to give it a second here and let it do that. A very long second. It is just a poor little 1024 megabyte server. Poor little processor can't keep up. Unfortunately with the Ubuntu distro it's a little bit more difficult to overclock the um, processor. Not like um, the Bane where it's easy. You just hit a Raspi config and go and change it to the turbo function. But here in Ubuntu it's a little bit more difficult. I'll probably go over that in a later video. But for now, the 900 megahertz should be sufficient to run the server. Well, 900 megahertz isn't going to be sufficient to run the server, but it should be sufficient enough for one person to play on the server, if you're lucky. Okay, and there we go. It's going to say that we failed to load the EULA text. So what we need to do is go ahead and edit that EULA text. So we're going to go ahead and nano or gedit, whatever your interpreter is. And then here on the third line, we're going to see it says EULA equals false. We're going to need to change that to true. Control X, Y, enter. And then we need to nano into. We need to nano into our generated server dot properties there. And as you can see, it's actually currently empty. We need to run the server first, so we're going to start that shish. And now it's going to go ahead and generate all the files we need, like the server.properties. And once we get into server.properties, you're going to want to change the view distance down to about 3. That should at least make it so you can maybe play on the server with three or four people. Yeah, um, for more for more of the uh, performance gains, you're gonna want to turn off mob spawns. Creative is a good mode to play on with this kind of server because, like I said, it is extremely slow with 512 megabytes to 1,000 gigs of RAM or one gig of RAM. Sorry, it's extremely slow. It's buggy, it crashes a lot, but it does run. So I mean it's fun if you want to have like two or three friends play creative mode on, but if you're looking to host like a giant server, you're definitely going to want to get a better computer. And as soon as it decides to go ahead and generate, we'll go ahead and hop into the server.properties.
Okay, there it goes. It's generating our game here. All these errors we're getting is because we lack the files needed to run the server, so it's going to go ahead and put those down there for us. You should see something similar on your first run here. Okay, and once you see it start to spawn here, it's literally going to take it about half an hour to go ahead and set up your spawn. So if you want to go ahead and control C it, that's going to stop the server. And then we should be able to edit our server.properties. And there we go. We're going to want to go ahead and change the view distance, like I said. View distance. Spawn animals is something you can change. Spawn NPCs you can lower to false. Snooper you can lower to false for it to be more sufficient. Max players you can only probably change to about five. Uh, and here's view distance down here. You want to change that to probably about three. It's going to look extremely awful, but it'll run. Um, the mod TD right here is message of the day. It's what pops up when people are connecting to your server. So you're going to change that to something you like. Um, build height you can lower for some better optimizations. Anything that you lower is going to optimize the server a little bit better, but you'll probably only be able to have a max of five people playing at once, and it is extremely buggy on the pie. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.